I have all of my stock ripped to build the door and it's out of oak. It's just some pieces that I had left over from another project and it's not the best quality. Actually, I normally wouldn't even use this, but it's just what I had and it's what I had left. I've already got it down to a thickness of three quarters of an inch and I ran it through my planer here. This is a Delta DC 380. It'll plane 15 inches wide and up to six inches thick. These boards that I've got, these uh, one by boards are about nine and a half inches and I'm going to make my first rip at nine and a quarter. And so I have uh, the wooden fence set up nine and a quarter inches from the edge of the blade and that'll be my first rip. I now have a good straight edge on one edge all the way down and what I'm going to do is turn that edge that I just sawed against the fence and I'm going to rip that other side. Now I have two straight edges and what I like to do, the last rip that I made, I like to take my pencil and just make a little X on that edge. And that lets me know that was the second cut that I made. And theoretically, that's the straightest edge. After I got all my boards for the door straight edged and ready to put together, I rigged up my router and I have a tongue and groove uh, router bit set. And as you can see here, I have the, the groove set up, uh, the bit that cuts the groove. There's a little bearing right underneath here that actually runs against the stock. And you have to kind of play with this to get uh, your groove exactly in the center. And this is the bit that cuts the tongue. It actually has to do twice the work that the, uh, the groove cutter has to do. But you have to play with this just a little bit to get, make sure that you have it centered on the edge of the board. And there again, you can see the bearing. It's in between the two cutter blades. I have all the tongue and grooves cut, but this is the tongue. It has, uh, it's a quarter inch wide tongue and these boards are three quarters of an inch. So there's a, a quarter inch shoulder here and over here. This, this will slide right up in the groove that I have cut. You can see the groove there. I took my block plane and set it real light. And I came down the top of this groove or the tongue rather, just took a, a little bit off because when I glue this up, I don't want that tongue to bottom out in the groove. I also took my block plane, still set real light, and I put just a little bit of a chamfer on that edge, on both sides of it, up here and down here. And I also did that where the groove is. There's just a little bit of a chamfer right there on both sides of it. And when I put these together, that will leave a little bit of a V groove down through there. And in case there was some blade wobble when I was ripping this or off the router or whatever, it uh, hides a multitude of sins. In putting these boards together, I'm trying to pose the bows that are in each board as far as the way the, the bend is. And as I put this together, those opposing bows will work contrary to each other and hopefully they will help to flatten it, the, whole, the whole door out. Okay, I've got the, the door glued together and clamped up, I put five clamps on it, two on the bottom and three on the top. But after this completely sets up and dries, I will take the clamps off and I'll be putting the C-bars on it to give it the strength and to uh, help the door to stay square. Alrighty, I've got the clamps off the door. I let it set overnight and the glue's set up really good. What I'm gonna be using to fill those holes and little places that need some attention. I'm going to use Mendwax uh, wood filler. All right, we've got all the, the wood filler in. It seems to have set up. Let's see how it turns out. I've got it sanded down and I've got these little holes filled up. Now they're a different color than the oak is, 
but I'm going to brush a coat of boiled linseed oil on this on the outside. I won't do it on the inside, just the outside. I have the door flipped over on the, the back side. It's facing up, and I'm getting ready to put the, the batten boards on for the Z-bar for bracing, and I'm holding it in a half an inch from this edge, and my first set of screws will be two inches in from this edge, and I'm coming down from the outside edge of it three quarters of an inch on the top, and I'm going to drill these holes and countersink them. All right, I'm getting ready to attach uh, the top batten board for the Z-bar bracing, and I'm going to glue it on and use screws, and I'm using a Titebond 3 uh, waterproof exterior interior glue. I've used quite a bit of this, and I really like this glue. It, it holds well. I have a mark here that, for the top edge of the board. And I've got it marked a half inch in from this edge, so that gives me a guide as I lay this down and get it situated exactly where I want it. Get it right on that line. I'm just gonna pick it up and then let it back down. It lets the glue kind of spread out just a little bit. I'm gonna cheat just a little bit. I'm gonna shoot this down with my finish gun. I'm pre-drilling these holes that go into the door, make it a little easier to put the, the screws in. I'm just using a, an inch and a half, I think these are number 12 wood screws. I've got the battens on and I'm getting ready to put the, uh, the angle brace on there. And if you look here, I've got this just about a half inch. Well, actually it's exactly half inch right here. And I did the same thing at the bottom. This is the top of the door that we're looking at. And this is the bottom down here. And I've got it held in an eight or a half inch from the end of the board also. Now I wanted to point out something with the way this, this brace is on here, what you're seeing is the hinge side of the door over there. That's the, the hinge side, and this is the side that will have the latch on. But when you're putting the brace in on a Z-bar door, your, your brace actually pushes up from the bottom batten board. And I know there's been a lot of them put in the other way, and to be truthful, the first door I ever built, I put it in backwards. But what I'm going to do is just scribe that, just make a tiny mark on either side, and just start sneaking up on it with my miter saw, and then I'll cut it and fit it in there. I just put a chamfer bit in my, uh, my router here. And what I'm going to do is put a little bit of a bevel, a chamfer, all the way around the batten board, all the way around that, and also the, uh, the brace board, the board that goes up at an angle, all the way down and across that angle to cut. And that will hide just a little bit of discrepancy in case that angle is not exactly perfect. That chamfer makes for a, a nice little detail and also where you have a butt joint like this and on a door or different applications where you can actually do this little chamfer detail. It doesn't weaken anything and it hides in case there's ever a tiny, tiny crack or a gap in, in your miter fit here. It helps to hide that. Now I'm going to glue this and drill it and anchor it just like I did the, the batten boards.
I've got the jams in, got the trim on, got the door wedged in here, and I'm going to mark around these hinge butts and chisel this out so that this, this flat part of the hinge will actually recess back into the trim and that will help you know, make it a little bit stronger with this being recessed into that. Thank you. 